So Aaron's over there working on my palm keys. What are you, what are you doing, Aaron? You're going to add some... <clears throat> Adding a little uh, plumber's putty. I'm mixing it up right now, and we're going to shape it to go on top of the palm keys here so the they'll fit Bob's hands a lot nicer, a lot closer to the palms of his hands. Right. It's something that uh, you can do to get these instruments. They, they weren't as ergonomic back at this time, right. would you say? But they sure were good musically. And uh, Okay, so we're going to go upstairs now and I'm going to show, uh, show you some of the horns that Aaron and I worked through over this last four days. Uh, I'd like to invite everybody into our little virtual trip around my uh, personal music facility here. I'm Bob Ackerman. To my left here is Aaron Barnard from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, who has come to spend a week with me. Uh, and I've been uh, spending a little time teaching him, but he's been teaching me a lot too. And uh, he wanted to learn more about mouthpieces and I need to learn more about repair. Not that I'm going to become a repairman, but you have to know what's happening. As you can see here, I'm doing a temporary job on a uh, soprano neck cork that was a little bit, whoops, still got to go further. And uh, when you need to replace a cork in a hurry, a musician's best friend is the plumber's best friend the Teflon tape and uh, I've used it to repair corks I've used it to repair pads when they were torn and I was out in public playing I always have it in my saxophone case uh, so we're just trying to get this to a place where I can tune this there, there I can tune this instrument up okay a little on the flat side, but uh, needed enough resistance. Okay, a little further. So Aaron's been here since Monday, this is Thursday afternoon, and I would say we've gone through somewhere between 20 and 25 instruments maybe closer to 20, you know. And uh, our last, uh, right now we're working on a con soprano that's in his hands here. And uh, he's not, these are not complete rebuilds, they're patch jobs. Because we're trying to bring the level of my inventory up to a higher level so that I can uh, in turn get some of you folks out there in the general public to uh, take some of them home and practice on them. Anyhow, this is my personal soprano right here. It's a Martin Committee and I, Martin Handcraft, and I've had it for many, many years. It was uh, set up for me by Aaron, a fr fellow that Aaron has done a lot of work with, Randy Jones. He has a, a place called Tenor Madness in uh, Waterloo, Iowa. And uh, we're going to compare these two sopranos. down and now we're going to take a time around the block with that one. You got some cork grease on it? No, I don't yet. Okay, I, we've got some cork grease right here. Got some. Your custom cork grease. Hey, wonderful. And uh, Aaron has a, uh, where's your shop, Aaron? It's in uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And uh, what kind of, it's, what kind of facility is it? It's a... Uh, it's in an old uh, building that's an old uh, manufacturing a uh, warehouse type facility that was uh, been renovated for small businesses. Uh huh. That's right down the uh, edge of downtown in Cedar Rapids. And uh, they make this cork grease there, don't they? Yep. 
Another one of those. Not pieces. really cork grease. It's a lip balm, but it works good as a cork they, grease. Uh, yep. Anyhow, enough with that. Ah, the cork <laughs> is definitely the right height. So we're going to give this. This he's just spent about two hours on this uh, con soprano. That Martin is made in 1931. It's a 92,000 Martin. Uh, maybe 1930. And this one is much earlier, 119. That puts it about 1923. If you can focus in there, Chris, you can see it's got some nice looking engraving down there. And 119,000. One of the things that we discovered today is that someone had added a piece onto the top of this soprano, uh, an extra piece of tubing. Is, uh, it definitely is a little longer than I than most of them from this age, and now we're going to find out whether that's really a good thing. Well, I'm still nice and flat, and I got to go down further. Always takes a minute to find the sweet spot. You have to uh, use a combination of overtone fingerings and real uh, actual fingerings to find where to exactly to get that mouthpiece. And usually, when you do that, you're right at the center of the gate of the uh, meter. And I'm not looking at completely all the time. Donaldson wrote a very good book on practicing with overtones and that's one of the things he did have you play in scales where you mix the overtone fingerings and the regular fingerings. It's a good thing and keep the sound exactly the same. I think we found a good place for this now. pretty nice. Got to watch yourself going in the upper register and you need a uh, large chamber mouthpiece which we have here. Uh, something that was uh, made for me by Ted Klum who's another guy that uh, comes around a lot. He's one of your great mouthpiece refacers. Okay I think this is pretty good. good. I think we're on a, uh, a good track with it. Uh, let me just go back for a second. I want to get a nice picture. That's actually, this is the case for the con. And uh, look at the Martin. See the nice engraving on that. So this is this instrument, which is 92,000, puts it at about a year, uh, almost 10 years, 8 years uh, newer. And uh, this is about the end of Sopranos until the 1960s when train comes along with my favorite things. Um, they stopped making Sopranos during the Depression and uh, I hope the one that we're in now doesn't last that long. <laughs> Anyhow, they, they cut out a lot of things. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things that we did was to open the resonance key on these instruments. That seems like I might be having a little fluttering there from that. I might ask you to look at that again. You hear when I went down low? Mm -hmm. Maybe I just didn't have enough mouthpiece. You really have to take more mouthpiece on a soprano than you do on an alto or a tenor. More on, a, more on a soprano, a little less on an alto, and the least on a tenor and baritone. Now, 
Now I can go in further. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you a little test that I usually uh, go with just to make sure my reed is totally working right. It's called a suction test and uh, I want to make sure I have a good read on this mouthpiece which I'm going to use as a test mouthpiece here. I heard that pop. I pull all the air out of the uh, mouthpiece and then it's sealed up completely and you got to time it as to how long it takes. There you go. It's, that's a good sign. This is a Rezo link that uh, Sebastian and Ted Klum both had a hand in uh, getting up to snuff for me. And here we have a Con Alto that uh, Aaron Barnard this week uh, worked on. This is a pad job that uh, goes back to my brother Russ, a new pad job. And uh, then we did some further things with it this week. We uh, added this strap hook extender and uh, I had him change a little bit about the setup on it and uh, so let's see what Aaron did. It's, this is going to be my first chance to play some of these horns since, he's, since he worked on them. Okay, let's get the old meter going so we know we're on pitch. Sound a little flat to me. More than a little flat. And still just a little bit more. Now this is a uh, 1953 345 822. I think I had this on eBay. No, on, on YouTube before, but uh, I wanted to take another shot with it. quality to it and if you look at it real well you'll see that it's like new yet action set down kind of low I like it like that some of you might come along and want the action higher but uh, I always start very conservatively okay con 6m